please stand for opening him. Uh, you are mine. Son of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, all of you who are watching us on the other side. Today, we are celebrating the feast of the baptism of the Lord. We celebrate birthdays with a lot of fuss but never our baptism. Yet this is our birthday as Christians. In today's liturgy, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus our Lord. In celebrating his baptism, we celebrate our own baptism too, and renew its grace within us. Today, I would like to say thank you to Edna and Doug Lorenzen. A few days ago, they were celebrating their 65th marriage anniversary. All of you in the parish, we would like to say thank you to you for your example, for your help to St. Patrick Church, and we wish you all the best on your way. The Mass is celebrating for you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Please be seated for the Lord of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way, and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Joy, you shall draw. 
letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks. tongue 
of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. and sisters, in the second reading today, we heard the words from St. John, who loves God, obeys his commandment. To love God means follow his commandments. Today, we end the Christmas season with a liturgy that commemorates the baptism of the Lord. The baptism for each one of us is nice memory. We, come in, we are coming to the church with, with our son and daughter, with our child, and we would like to baptize them. Jesus Christ, having taken on human form in his nativity, was baptized according to tradition showing that his ministry followed the will of God the Father. Today's liturgy is a cue to reflect on our own baptism. If we remember, the moment when we entered the Christian community. In the baptism service of the church, the baptized make certain promises through their parents, godparents, if they are infants, in their own voice, if they are adults. One promise is to renounce Satan and all his works. To renounce Satan, we invoke the commandments of God as our life's doctrine. To renounce the works of Satan, we try to implement the principles of the commandments in our action and words. In today's world, the word commandment might not be politically correct. Commandment might put off some people because they associate it with a break on individualism and freedom. It is a mistake to have this idea of the commandments that God passed on to us through Moses and Prophet. Saint John, in the second reading, tells us that we should not fear to live under the commandments of God, because they are not a burden that oppresses us. The commandments of God as set out in Scripture are rules that protect us from doing harm to ourselves and to others. In other words, 
These commandments promote goodness and peace. Let us remember that we were baptized to renounce Satan and all his works through fidelity to the commandments of God. Christ lowered himself from heaven so we could see him. In the Gospel of Mark, which we read today, John said, I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the sandals of Jesus. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the tongue of his sandals. Because John was humble, he recognized who he was and who Jesus was. We, however, tend to raise ourselves above others in our minds and actions. Brothers and sisters, until we recognize Jesus for who he is, as John did, we will not be able to understand our Lord. Last week, we celebrated here the Epiphany of the Lord. At the end of the Gospel was the third Magi came back by another road. What does it mean? They change their life. They didn't go back to their previous life because they met Jesus. When they saw him, their life completely changed. Today we see John the Baptist. When he saw Jesus to coming in towards him, he told him, Jesus, no, I'm not able to baptize you, you baptize me. But Jesus told him, John, do it. And he did. But when he saw Jesus, he recognized him. The baptism, if we are baptized in Christ, we are different people. We are not going home like the Magi did by the same way, because something is going to change in our life, in my life. I saw Jesus, and he's not going to be the same in my life. He's always putting me closer to himself. Do not be afraid to take Jesus into your home. What Jesus did that day at the Jordan River was to serve as a model for his public ministry. He would not keep himself apart from sinners. He would not want for them to come to him. He would see them out and befriend them. Jesus did not stand apart or put himself above the sinners he came to serve. He placed himself among them. He joined them where they were. He was even accused of being a sinner and was treated as a sinner. What motivated him was compassion. How many people he how many people he helped? And always what was his advice? Go and do not sin again. He was God's servant, sent to bring good news to the poor. 
and God was well pleased with him and with the mission on which he was about to embark. In this way, Jesus shows his love for us. Though completely sinless, Jesus took our sinful condition on himself. He doesn't stand apart from us, but has placed himself beside us as an older brother. He reveals to us that we are God's precious children. He wants to lead us out from our rigid condition of sin and death. He wants us to have life in abundance. And Saint Paul is talking to us today too. From now on, that is not longer I live, but Jesus Christ is living in me. Brothers and sisters, are we able to say, no longer I live, but Jesus lives in me? That's our goal. We are going there because we love him and he loves us. When two people love each other, the love is there. Keep doing the good job and God will help us to be with each other, to help each other and to support each other. As you, Jesus Christ, taught us and today as you showing us in the Jordan River in Jerusalem. Amen. Because today we are celebrating the baptism of the Lord, I would like us to follow uh, through the baptism promises as we are doing during the baptism. We are not going to say glory to God in the highest, but I'm going to ask you a question and your answer will be, I do, will be six times. Do not be worried. We are able to do it. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Brothers and sisters, do you reject Satan? I, I do. Do you and all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to confess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord, Amen. Trusting in God who sent his own Son for our salvation, let us offer our prayers this day. For the Church, may Christ continue to bless her with all she needs to bring his love to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers. For the salvation of the world, and for men and women of faith willing to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For women facing challenging pregnancies, may God look graciously upon them and grant them strength, hope, and a community of support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are baptized, may the Lord continue to deepen our faith as we grow in our knowledge and love of him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Edna and Doug Lorenzen, as they celebrate their 65th wedding anniversary, may God continue to bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the soul of Maria Beriot, who recently died, may she now rejoice in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for our beloved dead, especially Sylvia Duggan, as they died with Christ in baptism, may they now rejoice and live with him forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, please hear and answer our prayers this day according to your holy will. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son 
so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wish away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your world dwelling among us. And by the Spirit descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick's, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gary, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
called him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Wait. 
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Once again, thank you to all of you who are on the other side. Keep us in your prayers as we keep you in our prayers. This Sunday is the last Sunday of Christmas. I will be asking to, to our choir to sing maybe one or two Christmas carol because it's last time, last uh, Sunday. And I would like to, to share with you one of our parishioners, Mary Barrio has passed uh, a few days ago and her funeral will be next week. We are not able to invite you for that funeral because of the COVID uh, uh, restriction, only the closest family only uh, will be able to be here. But please keep Marie in your prayer. The Sunday, the baptism of the Lord. May he will be born with us, with you and me. And may we will be his apostles, his witnesses around the world where we are. I wish you all the best. I wish you nice, beautiful uh, weekend and excellent next week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. I'm not leaving because I would like to listen to Christmas carols. <laughs> the closing hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful.